as we continue our study in the book of Revelation. Our scripture reading this morning comes from Revelation chapter 9, and I will be reading verses 12 through 21 from the New King James Version. One woe is past. Behold, still two more woes are coming after these things. Then the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel who had the trumpet, Release the four angels who are bound at the great river Euphrates. So the four angels who had been prepared for the hour and day and month and year were released to kill a third of mankind. Now the number of the army of horsemen was 200 million. I heard the number of them, and thus I saw the horses in the vision. Thus those who sat on them had breastplate of fiery red, hyacinth blue, and sulfur yellow. And the heads of the horses were like the heads of lions, and out of their mouths came fire, smoke, and brimstone. By these three plagues, a third of mankind was killed by the fire and the smoke and the brimstone which came out of their mouths. For their power is in their mouth and in their tails, for their tails are like serpents having heads, and with them they do harm. But the rest of mankind who were not killed by these plagues did not repent of the works of their hands, that they should not worship demons and idols of gold, silver, brass, stone, and wood, which can neither see nor hear nor walk. And they did not repent of their murders or their sorceries or their sexual immorality or their thefts. My subject for this Sunday morning is the blast of the sixth trumpet. The demonic-like blast of military horsemen, the trumpet blast of judgment is going to fall upon the earth and it's going to fall upon the ungodly and evil of this world. Mm -hmm. And we have seen this in the first four trumpet blasts that fell upon nature. Mm -hmm. Horrifying and catastrophic events destroyed one third of the vegetation, yes. the water supply, mm -hmm. the sea life, and the shipping and fishing commer commerce of the world. Yes. And scientists have warned us all the time about the possibility of such horrors unless the environment is protected and such a horrible time is coming. Amen. But in the first four trumpet judgments, we won't be afflicted Man won't be afflicted, at least not on a massive scale. Mm -hmm. That is, our bodies won't be attacked. Our bodies won't suffer any massive ill effects from these catastrophes. But after these natural disasters, the ungodly and the evil of the world will be judged. Mm -hmm. And the last three trumpet judgments will be directed against them personally, mm -hmm. and millions of people will be afflicted and destroyed. They're going to reap what they have sown mm -hmm. and they have sown terrible ungodliness therefore they are going to reap the punishment of their evil mm -hmm. and the punishment will be so severe that it can only be called a prolonged period of woe a prolonged period of anguish of grief of affliction that's woe thus the last three trumpet judgments are the woe judgments wow. the judgments directed against the ungodly and evil of this world. And the first woe judgment was seen in chapter 8 in the blast of a demonic like plague of locusts. But the demonic locusts could only torture the people. It couldn't kill them. Yes. But now the sixth trumpet blasts forth its judgment. Mm -hmm. And another horde of demons come forth. This time however there's a difference mm -hmm. because these are military demons and they will take their toll on human life. Amen. In this woe judgment, an astronomical number of the ungodly and evil of the world will die under the judgment of God's righteous hand. And this woe judgment mm -hmm. is the judgment of the demonic military horsemen. Yes. Verse 12 says, one woe is 
past. Behold, still two more woes are coming after these things. More woes lie ahead. More anguish, more grief, more affliction. In the great tribulation that's coming upon the earth, there is to be a catastrophic destruction and devastation. And it will be such a terrible time that it can only be described as a period of woe. That is a period of extreme grief, mm -hmm. distress, yes. suffering, affliction, calamity, and disaster. Right. The woe judgments of God are the trumpet judgments mm -hmm. that zero in on a Afflicting the bodies of the ungodly. Yes. And one woe judgment has already been covered. Mm -hmm. The demonic like locusts. But two more woe judgments are yet to fall upon the evil of the world. Mm -hmm. Verses 13 through 15 says. Then the sixth angel sounded. And I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar which is before God saying to the sixth angel who had the trumpet, release the four angels who are bound at the great river Euphrates. So the four angels who had been prepared for the hour and day and month and year were released to kill a third of mankind. Four fallen angels are set loose. Mm -hmm. And three facts are given about the four fallen angels being loose. Fact number one, they are set loose by a command coming from the golden altar. And this is the altar of incense where the prayers of God's people are kept. All right. Revelation chapter 6 verses 9 through 10 says, When the Lamb broke the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of all who had been martyred for the word of God and for being faithful in their testimony. They shouted to the Lord and said, O sovereign Lord, holy and true, how long before you judge the people who belong to this world and avenge our blood for what they have done to us. And then Revelation chapter 8 verses 3 through 4 says, Then another angel with a gold incense burner came and stood at the altar. And a great amount of incense was given to him to mix with the prayers of God's people as an offering on the gold altar before the throne. The smoke of the incense mixed with the prayers of God's holy people ascended up to God from the altar where the angel had poured them out. This symbolizes a significant fact. God launches this judgment specifically to vindicate the millions who will be slaughtered in the holy cost of the Antichrist. Amen. And God is going to be perfectly just. He's going to execute perfect judgment against the Antichrist and his followers who have slaughtered millions. Mm -hmm. And they too will be slain by the judgment of God. Yes. The very prayers of the golden altar cry out for the name of God to be vindicated against those who laughed, mm. mocked, rejected, denied, disbelieved, disobeyed, and cursed God. Mm. And God is going to hear these prayers. Amen. The second fact about the four fallen angels being loosed is that the four released angels are bound at the great Euphrates River. In verse 14, the definite article the is used, release the four angels who are bound at the great Euphrates River. The four fallen angels are four specific angels, four angels of high military rank. Mm -hmm. But why would the angels come from the Euphrates? And scripture doesn't say, but two reasons seem likely. The head or spring of the Euphrates River flowed out of the Garden of Eden. Mm -hmm. And it was there in the Garden of Eden where Satan first tempted and overthrew man. The first sin that resulted in the fall of the human race took place at the head of the Euphrates River. Mm -hmm. It was also there that the first murder took place. And it was in the region of the Euphrates that the first organized rebellion against God 
God took place. Mm. The Euphrates was the western boundary of the promised land that God promised to Abraham. Mm. Therefore, beyond the Euphrates can be looked upon as the outer reaches of the earth. It can be looked upon as the place where the spiritual enemies of man are kept. Amen. The four angels are angels of punishment. They come from the part of the world from which death and disaster and slavery has so often come. Mm -hmm. The third fact about the four fallen angels being set loose is that they were loosed and prepared to execute judgment upon the earth. The judgment of slaying one third of the ungodly and evil population of the world. But I want you to remember why. Okay. And it's because billions of people on the earth will follow and give their total allegiance and support to the Antichrist and to the policies of his government. Mm -hmm. And one of the major policies will be the Holy Cost that's launched against the believers of the world. Literally millions will be slaughtered. Mm -hmm. Simply stated, God will not be able to take the diabolical evil of ungodly people anymore. Mm -hmm. God will not be able to take the wicked or cruel of this world world any longer. Thus God will finally allow his justice to be executed mm -hmm. and demonstrated. The diabolical, the wicked and cruel, the ungodly and evil will reap the slaughter they've inflicted upon others. Mm -hmm. But I want you to notice one other fact. God has already set the time for this judgment. Yeah. There's an, an exact year, mm -hmm. month, and day. There's even an exact hour that this judgment is to fall upon the ungodly and evil of this world. And so the hour is already fixed. Mm. Verses 16 through 19 says, Now the number of the army of the horsemen was 200 million. I heard the number of them. And thus I saw the horses in the vision. Those who sat on them had breastplate of fiery red, hyacinth blue, and sulfur yellow. And the heads of the horses were like the heads of lions, and out of their mouths came fire, smoke, and brimstone. By these three plagues, a third of mankind was killed by the fire and the smoke and the brimstone which came out of their mouths. For their power is in their mouth and in their tails, for their tails are like serpents having heads. And and with them they do harm. Judgment and fallen angels. These are the military horsemen and their demonic horses. And several things are said about this demonic horde. First, this demonic horde will be an army of 200 million. Imagine an army of 200 million demonic spirits let loose on earth, and yet this will be the army that the four fallen angels will command, an army such as the world has never seen before. Second, the riders of this demonic horde will have breastplate, and the armor or breastplate of fiery red, hyacinth blue which is like a dark blue sapphire and sulfur yellow and the armor or breastplate symbolizes that as they go to war against the ungodly of the world they will be indestructible protected and defended and no man will be able to stop them Third, the horses of this demonic horde will be horrible and they will add terror upon terror on the ungodly. Yeah. They will add fear, dread, fright, panic, and alarm to the ungodly. Fourth, this demonic horde will have heads like lions, mm. ferocious, fierce, devouring, cruel, and consuming. Yeah. Fifth, this demonic horde will have mouths that spit out fire of a hellish and fiery nature, a vengeful, angry, and wrathful nature. Revelation chapter 14 verse 10 says, He himself shall also drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out full strength into the cup of his indignation, his righteous anger. He shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. Six, this demonic horde will kill one third of the ungodly and evil people on the earth. But who are the ungodly and evil of the earth? And we see the ungodly and evil in Revelation chapter 21 verse 8. But cowards, unbelievers, these are the ungodly and evil, the corrupt, 
murderers, the immoral, those who practice witchcraft, idol worshipers, and all liars, their fate is in the fiery lake of burning sulfur. This is the second death. The ungodly and evil people of the earth will be killed by the plague of fire, smoke, and brimstone. Amen. And did you notice that the weapons used by this demonic army aren't given? But doesn't fire, smoke, and brimstone sound like an atomic explosion? Wow. What we must keep in mind is that this slaughter is being masterminded by evil spirits and demonic forces. Mm -hmm. But it's all being executed under God's will as a judgment upon the ungodly and evil of the world. And the seventh power of this demonic horde mm -hmm. is in their mouths, yeah. their heads, and their tails. And the head symbolizes intelligence. The mouth symbolizes deceptive speech and a hunger to consume and to destroy. And the serpent-like tails symbolize poisonous strikes and deadly wounds. The picture of the Great Tribulation is a picture of horror heaped upon horror. It's a frightful and fearful scene. But with what we know about the possibility of atomic destruction, environmental devastation, and the possibility of some monstrous gene mutation, the judgments of God's book can no longer be doubted. Amen. Not if God is really God and not if God is truly just and not if some diabolical, wicked or cruel leader arises as they have in the past who launches a holocaust against God's people. Mm -hmm. If some demon of a person slaughters millions and millions of God's people mm -hmm. and if the whole world sits back and lets him do it by giving his support, God is bound to execute justice. Amen. This is what will cause the Antichrist to be different from all the former world leaders mm -hmm. who have killed millions. And that's because the former leaders only had limited support. Yes. But in the last days, the Antichrist will have the support of the most have the support of most of the ungodly and evil people of the earth. Mm -hmm. Verses 20 through 21 says, But the rest of mankind who were not killed by these plagues did not repent of the works of their hand, that they should not worship demons and idols of gold, silver, brass, stone, and wood, which can neither see, nor hear, nor walk. And they did not repent of their murders or their sorceries or their sexual immorality or their thefts. Judgment. And the purpose for the judgment is repentance. And this outpouring of judgment upon the earth was a final attempt by God to bring people to repentance. Amen. They had a chance to turn from their evil deeds, but unfortunately they didn't. Amen. And they saw was occurring, but they still refused to turn to God, desiring mm. instead to continue to worship demons and idols. Yes. And two significant points are now made. The ungodly and evil survivors of the earth still don't repent and turn to God, and there will be several gross sins for which the ungodly need to repent. Mm -hmm. Two-thirds of the population will suppose will survive, not because they deserve to survive, mm -hmm. but because God is merciful Amen. and God is always merciful. Even in the midst of the judgments, God will give the ungodly of the earth another chance to repent, speaking to them through the judgments, but they still won't repent. Mm -hmm. And God has never delighted in the death of the wicked. Amen. In the midst of his visitations of the severe judgments, God delights in being gracious to the guilty. Mm. But sadly, with the death of one billion people in the earth, that's a billion with a B, and the accompanying grief and confusion that follows such a disaster, mm. the rest of the people of the earth are still unwilling to repent. Amen. And such is the human heart, mm. deceitful above all things yeah. and desperately wicked. Mm. 
after two world wars and 100 lesser wars in the past 50 years the world is more wicked now than ever before and if you don't believe that all you have to do is hold the word of God up to the world and you can see the world through God's eyes Amen. instead of repentance sin increases and there will be several gross sins for which the ungodly need to repent and remember in the end time there will be an enormous increase and intensification of evils there will be an increase in the worship of evil spirits and the worship of idols yeah. actually devils are said to be behind the worship of idols mm -hmm. Think about how much worship of evil spirits and idols is going on today. Think about how much is going on in the cities of the world at any given moment. Mm -hmm. And scripture actually declares that the worship of all gods except the Son of God, mm -hmm. the Lord Jesus Christ, is the worship of an evil spirit or an idol. Amen. In fact... Scripture even declares that covetousness is idolatry. Mm. And it's idolatry because you have set your heart on something other than God himself. Amen. You have made something other than God your idol mm. when you owe your first allegiance to God. Amen. Remember now, an idol can't see, mm -hmm. an idol can't hear, mm -hmm. and an idol can't walk. Amen. And God proved his awesome power and authority over their idols that they could neither see nor hear nor walk and just for the record idolatry is demonic it's the worship of Satan yes. first Corinthians chapter 10 verse 20 says rather the things which the Gentiles sacrifice they sacrifice to demons and not to God and I do not want you to have fellowship with demons here's what I want you to get and I pray that you are paying close attention. Demons hate the very people who worship them. And if you don't believe this, think about what they do to you. The very demons you worship torture and kill you, yet people still prefer those demons over God. Something's the matter with this picture. That's why they didn't repent and turn to God. And that's why there has to be eternal punishment. Amen. God does everything he can to draw people to himself but people still want to continue in their idol worship they still want to live out what that worship leads to which are murders witchcraft immorality and thefts they have chosen their side thus they must remain there God doesn't want anyone to perish but when God's call is consistently rejected, mm -hmm. then judgment must fall. Just remember that when you choose your idol over God, mm -hmm. your, God your idol can't answer a single prayer. No. Your idol can't give a single ounce of strength. Yeah. Your idol can't lift a single finger to help you. Right. Your idol can't save a single hair on your head. Yeah. Your idol can't extend a single minute to your life. Yeah. And your idol can't carry a person one single inch into heaven. Amen. Idols can't arouse one single moment of acceptance out of God and neither can they give a single moment of eternal life to anyone. Idols are lifeless. Idols can do absolutely nothing. Hallelujah. But the evil spirits behind the idols can damage and destroy your soul forever. Yeah. This is what will cause so much idolatry and worship of evil spirits in the last days. And the Antichrist will demand that you worship the state. Laws will be passed demanding that you give your first loyalty, your first allegiance to the state. And the worship of the state, of course, helps the government in keeping control of its people. Amen. And this is the worst kind of idolatry because you have to submit to the state or else you will be imprisoned and executed. In the 
the government of the Antichrist, people will be executed for not giving their first loyalty to the state. Mm -hmm. And God hates idolatry. And he demands in no uncertain terms that we turn away from idolatry and that we turn away from the worship of evil spirits. Yes. Deuteronomy chapter 11 verse 16 says, Take heed to yourselves, lest your heart be deceived and you turn aside and serve other gods and worship them. In the end time, there will be an increase in the sin of murder. Remember all the martyrs that John saw in heaven? The numberless multitude of believers slaughtered by the Antichrist and his yeah. government and followers? The martyrs were so many that no one could count them. Revelation chapter 7 verse 9 says, After this I saw a vast crowd, too great to count, from every nation and tribe and people and language, standing in front of the throne and before the Lamb. They were clothed in white robes and held palm branches in their hands. All over the world, believers will be slaughtered from all nations and tribes and languages and people. Think about the Holocaust that will take place. Not a single tribe on this earth, not where a believer exists will escape the attempt of the Antichrist in the world to stamp out the followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Antichrist will have his followers all over the world and they will support his murderous moves against the believers of the Lord Jesus Christ. Matthew 24 verse 10 says, and then many will be offended, will betray one another, and will hate one another. This undoubtedly is the difference between the holy cost of the past and the holy cost of the Antichrist. In the past, the diabolical leaders, the wicked and cruel leaders like Hitler and Stalin, had only a small number of people who supported their murderous genocide. But the Antichrist will have worldwide support. Mm -hmm. And the fact that it's worldwide and that it's launched against all the followers of God's Son will trigger God's decision to go ahead and move in his final judgment. Mm. The point is this, murder will be one of the great sins of the Antichrist and his followers and it's a sin for which the ungodly and evil must repent or they will face the terrible judgments of the end time and of eternity. Exodus 20 verse 13 says, you shall not murder. In the end time, there will be an increase in the sin of sorcery, which in the Greek is the word pharmakon, which is close to the spelling of the English word pharmacy, the place that handles drugs. And sorcery includes all kinds of witchcraft. It includes the use of drugs or the use of evil spirits to gain control over the lives of others or over your own life. And in the present context, mm -hmm. it would include all forms of sorcery, including astrology, palm reading, seances, fortune telling, mm. crystals, and other forms of witchcraft. First Chronicles chapter 10 verse 13 says, So Saul died for his unfaithfulness which he had committed against the Lord because he did not keep the word of the Lord and also because he consulted a medium for guidance. Mm. In the end time there will be an increase in immorality which is a broad word that includes all forms of immoral and sexual acts. Mm -hmm. It's premarital sex and adultery. It's abnormal sex. It's homosexuality. It's all all kinds of sexual vice. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 18 says, Flee sexual immorality. Every sin that a man does is outside the body, but he who commits sexual sin sins against his own body. Yes. In the end time, there will be an increase in thefts, which means to cheat and steal, to take wrongly from another person, either legally or illegally. Leviticus 19.11 says, You shall not steal, nor deal falsely, nor lie, to one another. This is the blast of the sixth trumpet, the judgment of the demonic military horsemen, and more woes lie ahead. The four fallen angels are set loose. The military horsemen and the, the demonic horses appear, 
But the purpose of the judgments is to lead people to repentance. Mm -hmm. It's God's purpose to lead people to repentance and salvation. It's God's purpose to lead you to the glorious inheritance of the great redemption that's to be given to all true followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Will you repent? Mm. Will you turn from your sin and turn to God? Well. Will you have a change of direction? Will you change your mind for the better? Will you amend your ways, hating your past sins, remembering that the kingdom of heaven is at hand? Mm -hmm. Or will you face God's judgment? Wow. The choice is yours. Yes. Make the right choice. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you.